Hello and welcome back to the Mac Tech Tech. Today we have Animated Army, a precon commander from Bloomboro in Gruel Colors, helmed by a little raccoon bard. Belos Bard of the Brambles is a 3-3 three, three for 3. He makes it so all of your non-equipment artifacts and all of your non-aura enchantments that cost at least 4 mana enter as 4-4 four, four creatures with haste and indestructible. And whenever any of them deal damage to a player, you do get to draw a card. So what we're doing here is a lot of artifact and enchantment value. Uh, we're really looking to punish our opponents, especially with a little bit of burn effects. Uh, generally outpace them in terms of drawing a ton of cards. And just really go into value town. Now, as always, we are going to take out 10 cards. Put in 10 cards we feel are a little more synergistic, a little more high power. I uh, cannot make the deck work a little bit more consistently. We're not going to touch that mana base because touching the mana base would be boring. And we're not here to be boring. Uh, so let's get to it. Starting off on the chopping block, we have Chaos Warp. Chaos Warp is a single target removal, which is really more of a gamble. Uh, sure, you might get rid of a highly synergistic piece and shuffle it away, which is a good way to get rid of it. However, there's a good enough chance that, like, they're going to flip something equally or worse, you know, even more powerful, off the top of that deck. We're not here for it. We're going to throw it away. Burnished Heart follows that up. Burnished Heart is generally good in any commander deck, uh, but it's an easy enough cut. Uh, if they were one more mana, they might get to stay because then they'd come out as a 4-4 four, four, instead of a 3-3, or a 2-2, rather. But I find them pretty easy to cut in almost any deck. They can go. Rampaging Bayloths. So this is a 6-6 six, six for 6. They do have landfall to create some more 4-4s. Four, uh, it's definitely not bad, but it's not great. Um, I feel like we could cut them pretty easily here. We actually don't have a lot of extra lands. And at a certain point, you know, we really don't need to be ramping as hard as some other green decks would. Harmonize, four mana, draw some cards. Again, generally good. I feel like this is a strong green card, but with all the extra card draw we already have built into the deck from our commander alone, it isn't necessary. Lenore, Lone Speaker, a 1-3 mana dork for two mana. They can also turn one of your lands into a 3-3. Uh, not bad, but again, we're just, this isn't a land deck, so removing these two things, three things, if you really include that Burnished Heart that kind of care more about these lands, I think kind of makes sense here. A Braid. This is more targeted removal, and targeted removal that we don't want. It's not as strong in Commander as it is in other 1v1 formats, so it could go. Domri, an Ark of Bolas. Uh, so this is a three loyalty, three cost Commander does give all of your creatures plus one, plus O, oh, which is kind of irrelevant. Sure, it's a little bit of extra damage, but kind of also whatever. They can add mana, and this is like, oh, this is like the third thing that kind of adds mana that we're cutting. Yes, it is, but again, we don't care about the land that much. We're going to get mana elsewhere. Don't worry about it. Prosperous Bandit. So Prosperous Bandit is a little treasury boy. They have some offspring to create a 1-1 one -one copy of themselves. Uh, they do have first strike, and if they happen to deal combat damage to a player, we do get to create some uh, tapped treasure tokens. Atali Primal Storm. I cut Atali pretty consistently. Don't be wrong. Atali is a good creature. It's just a slow creature. A creature that we telegraph the fact that we're going to have them come out to attack the following turn. And really tell our opponents, hey, if you've been holding back a board wipe, now's the time to do it because we're about to get value. And last of our 10 cuts is Decimate. So Decimate, you know, is a powerful spell, but one that could very easily fizzle if someone removes one of your four targets uh, before it gets the chance to resolve. It just doesn't do anything. Now, of course, with those 10 cards out of the way, we are adding in 10 more cards. What are we starting off with? Well, we're starting off with a Horde Hauler. So this is from New Capenna. It is naturally a 5-5. Five, five. Uh, it has Trample. It's a vehicle. We don't need to crew it, though. Our commander is going to turn this vehicle on because it costs at least 4 mana. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we are going to create a treasure for each artifact that they have. 
So this is kind of like a half dock side for a single player, but it is repeatable, and we're here for it. Fire Emancipation is a five cost enchantment. So again, it's gonna come out onto the field as a four, four with our commander. If a source we control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it's going to deal triple damage. We are trying to burn them out fast. City on fire is also in this list of additions. One, it's convocable, which is cool. Uh, but we're gonna sit here and deal triple damage as well. And it's also gonna come out as a four, four for us. Grand Warlord Rada. So Grand Warlord Rada is really just here to give us extra mana that we're not losing between phases. This is going to come in handy with, you guessed it, Aggravated Assault. Guess what? If we have enough creatures, if we have Aggravated Assault and Grand Warlord Rada on the field, we are taking infinite combat steps with, you guessed it, indestructible enchantment creatures. Oh man, are we just going to win? Yes. Yes, we are. Heroic Intervention is here to protect our commander for the most part, uh, given that most of our permanents are already going to be indestructible creatures on our turn. And when it's not our turn, they aren't creatures, which allows them to evade the board wipes anyways. Glorious Sunrise, another enchantment that is going to become a creature through the power of our Bardic Raccoon. Uh, they have a couple good effects here. One is going to make it so that our creatures are a little bit bigger and have trample. We love that. Uh, we could have a land tap for extra mana, which is fine. We could draw a card if we control a creature with power three or greater. We always will with our commander on the field and glorious sunrise. Or we could just gain three life, but we're really here for that first effect. Sanctum Weaver is going to follow that up. They are an enchantment creature. They are going to tap for mana equal to the number of enchantments we control, which is going to be a lot. We've definitely focused more on the enchantment side of things than the artifact side of things, but we do have some artifacts already in the deck that are pretty strong. So we are going to get value on both ends of that from our commander. That leads us into Guardian Project. Guardian Project would normally only hit for actual creature spells, but with our commander in the field, it's also going to trigger for all of our enchantments. Bam, we're drawing extra cards. The last big addition for us is going to be Nature's Will. So Nature's Will is actually pretty strong for us. Uh, whenever one or more creatures deal combat damage to an opponent, we're going to tap down all our lands and untap all of ours, allowing us to get a lot of value off of all of our lands, right? They're effectively tapping for two each turn. And with all the card draw, we have to go along with them kind of punching through and hitting people. We are going to have things to do with that mana. You know, it's not just going to sit there and go to waste. Now, as always, there are some cards that didn't quite make that top 10, but are still good nevertheless. We have Xenagos, God of Rebels. So Xenagos is an enchantment creature. He's a 6-5. He's indestructible. Uh, as long as our devotion is less than 7, they're not a creature. But with our commander, they're always a creature. At the beginning of combat, we do get to pass out a little bit of power with him, which is always nice. Shimon, the Inner Sun. So this is a 6-cost thing that makes it so that our spells can't be countered, which is always good. We're also going to discover 5. Really just adding value, and the fact that they're going to be a 4-4 hasty indestructible creature on our turn, thanks to our commander, is even better. The Great Henge, you know it, you love it. You know, it adds power to all of our creatures, it gains us life. Uh, it is $54. I can't tell if I want to run out and spend $54 on a single card, but if you have it, it's good here. Gimli's Reckless Might. So this is back from Lord of the Rings. It is a four-cost enchantment, so again, it's going to come out as a 4-4 four, four hasty indestructible creature. It also has uh, the ability to give all of our creatures haste, which is kind of just like a little bit of nice icing on top. Not super relevant. Uh, but whenever we attack, if we control creatures with total power of 8 or greater, we are going to force fights. Uh, and we could have all of our enchantments that are indestructible, fight whatever we want, and kind of not care. Last of our honorable mentions is actually pretty cheap, it just wasn't quite top 10. We have Sight of the Scale Lords. So this is a five cost enchantment, so again, it's gonna come out as a four or four hasty indestructible creature, thanks to our commander. Beginning of our combat, we are going to give some plus two, plus two, and vigilance to all of our creatures. Uh, we're really here for that extra damage more so than the vigilance, because again, 
these enchantments aren't creatures on our opponent's turn. But guys, that's the deck. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you felt like you got some value out of this, go ahead and do me a favor. Hit like, give me a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to ensure you never miss an episode. Maybe even uh, go ahead and join the Discord. There's a link to that below as well. If you want to see, you know, other content, you can click either of the links here or here. Uh, and until next time, I'm Mech, a.k.a. The Energy King. Good luck with your builds.